So now we are going to start discussion on priority rules. The first line is important that we have discussed two sort of uh, tools. One is the routing sheet and other is the GAN chart. So routing and scheduling sheets determine the machines or work standards uh, that will be used to process specific jobs. They tell us the sequence of activities, but they do not indicate the order in which the jobs waiting at a given work center are to be processed. So that is something that we assumed in the case of infinite loading. How to sequence jobs at a work center? So that is the basic question. If we are having more than one orders and we have one machine available or one work center available, how should we sequence them? So the ranking of jobs to be run at a work center is created through the application of priority rules. And there are many rules. We will discuss just four actually. In fact, three and the fourth one is just a derivative of um, the first three. Some of these rules attempt to reduce work in process inventory. Some attempt to minimize the number of late orders and some attempt to maximize the output of the work center. So what is the issue? So basic issue is that we are making a family of products that require the same work centers. So this is actually uh, the figure from one of the organization that I assigned you during first assignment. That was an example of a job shop. So that organization is making display products like the ones on the show. So you could see some similarities between these. So uh, they are used to display, of course, some products uh, at some shopping mall. And we are assuming that they are using same material and similar processes. So for example, we, we will require designing and we will require some, uh, some welding operation and we will require some say bending operation, some painting is required, some woodwork might also be required. So there are four or five processes that all these different products require. So they may have different height, different width, but the operations are the same. So for example, we are having these four products that are to be processed on these say five operations. And we assume that for example, uh, this is the first operation that is to be performed on this work center, let's suppose. And we are having four orders to be, uh, to be waiting for this machine. So which one of these should be processed first? So that is meant by setting the priority rules. If there are more than one orders to be waiting to be processed on the same work center, which should be uh, processed first. So we will discuss three very simple priority rules and the fourth one is a derivative of these. So first rule is first come first serve. Jobs are performed in the sequence in which they are received. This rule ignores the due date and processing time. The second rule is earliest job due date First, so jobs are performed according to their due dates. Due dates are considered, but processing time is not. Third is shortest processing time first, or SPT. Uh, SPT. Jobs are sequenced according to their process time. This rule ignores due dates, but it maximizes the number of jobs processed. And there are some other rules as well uh, that we are not going to discuss. So there is a term related to these rules, and that is called tardiness. So for jobs that are late, the delivery date minus the due date. So that is the tardiness. For example, uh, the due date was say day uh, 30 and the delivery date or the completion date is for example, uh, day 35. So the tardiness will be 35 minus 30. So that will be equal to five days. Uh, this is a, a certain word, a terminology that is used in job shop scaling. So that is tardiness. So it is used only for late jobs. For the jobs that are on time, the tardiness will either be zero or it will be having a negative value. So that, that simply means that the job is on schedule. So this is a very simple example that we're going to start with. 
using the shortest processing time rule, determine the sequence for the following jobs waiting at work center 102 at Johnson's machine shop. The job information follows. So there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six jobs that are waiting on this specific work center. And this is the processing time for each of these. So which job should be processed first based on the shortest processing time and priority rule. So the shortest processing time is for job E, that is one day it should be processed first, then job B, and then job A. And you could see two jobs have the same processing time. So we could scale any of these first and then the job C. So just to start with a simple example, so job E is processed first because it has the shortest processing time. And then job B, it is having the second shortest processing time and so on. So the benefit of shortest processing time rule is that uh, the flow time as a whole, the average flow time uh, reduces. So we are getting rid of the, uh, uh, the jobs that require less time. So this is the benefit of shorter processing rule. But the other side of the picture is that the jobs requiring long processing time have to wait more. So they are having a lot of processing time and they're also having a lot of waiting time. So although the average lead time for the, the jobs that the organization is processing reduces, but this increases for the jobs requiring longer processing time because their processing time is longer and they have to wait longer as well. So example problem two, four jobs are waiting to be processed at work center four to five. Use the following priority rules to schedule the jobs at the work center, first come first serve, shortest processing time and earliest due date. Which rule results in lowest average tardiness? Assume the work center to start working on these jobs from date 226. So that date is actually uh, the number of working day in a year. So some organization may use uh, uh, the production calendar that marks only the working day. So there are four jobs, A, B, C, and D. Their processing times are given, arrival dates are given, as well as the due dates are given. So first we will use uh, the priority rule, first come, first served. So the the job that arrived first should be processed first. So you could see here, so we, we have to set the priority. So first, second, third and fourth priority. So which job arrived first? So the earliest arrival is for job D that is uh, date double, uh, that is the date triple two then this is job A, the arrival date is double to three, then job B, double to four, and then job C, double to five. So that will be the sequence. Yes, D, A, B, C. So that will be D, A, B, and C. The processing time are given. So for D, it is two days, for A, it is four days, and for B, it is one day, and C, it is five days. So that will be taken from this table. So that is two, four, one, and five. So we have actually made the decision based on the arrival dates. So they are uh, these dates from this column. And due dates can also be taken from uh, this table. So that is an important factor. So for job D, it is two double three. And for A, it is two three five, two three two. And for C, it is two three zero. Now, 
this is actually that uh, something given and we have made the priority based on that data. Now, what should be the start date for job D? So we have to start working from date 226 that is given. So the start date will be date 226. And there are two days uh, for the processing for this uh, job D. So we can finish it by uh, day 227. So the start day for job A will be 228 and its processing time is four days. So we can finish it by day 231. For B, the starting day will be, sorry, 23. Two and it is having one processing day, so we can finish it by the same day. And we are having five days for job C, so we will start it at day uh, two double three, and we can finish it on day two three seven. Now, what is the tardiness in each case? So that is the tardiness is equal to completion date minus due date. So the completion date for job D is uh, 227 and the due date is 233 uh, so that will be minus so we will write zero here. For job A it is 231 minus 235 so that is minus four so it is not late. Similarly job three 232 minus 232 so again, this is exactly zero, but for job C, it is 237 minus 230. So the tardiness for job C is seven days. So only job C is late and it is late by seven days. Uh, now we will use, so this is the result. So you can see here, you can match. And now we will move to the next rule that is shortest processing time. So again, we have the question, question is started. So this is a result for first come, first serve. This one is for SPT, the shortest processing time. The tardiness is only for job C, and that is seven days. And this is for earliest due date and the job C is not late in this case. It is finished exactly on time. Job B is finished one day before the due date. The job D is exactly uh, completed at the <clears throat> due date and job A in this case is late uh, for two days. <clears throat> 